Good morning, my brothers and sisters. This is Deborah Catch It by Faith for another morning inspiration. Um, <clears throat> I hope you guys had having a blessed morning. God woke us up this morning, starting us on our way. Um, we have the use of our limbs. We open the first thing we open up our eyes, so we have to give glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for waking us up this morning. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. We thank you and give you all praises to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, this morning, because I have been asked, um, why do why do so many why do so why do so many people have to experience terrible deaths? Or why do a God why does God allow people to suffer in death? Let's talk about that this morning. Okay. Um Suffering is a universal part of humanity that exists in a fallen world. The question of why there is suffering and death for some and not as much for others is really is really not answerable. We really don't know why God allows. Because we don't we don't have the mind and the purpose of Christ. That's in Hebrews, um, Hebrews eleven thirty three to forty reads, "Who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised? Who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped on the edge of the sword? Whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, rooted foreign armies?" Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they may gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed into two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskin, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God since has planned something better for us so that only together with us would be made perfect. And the reason that God is already blessed. Scripture tells us in Hebrews 11 that we often read of the heroes of faith in the Bible, but neglect to list those who were unnamed yet suffered for their faith. The Bible tells us they all die suffering deaths, yet are heroes of their faith. They are unarmed and unsung among men, but God values their suffering and includes them in this great chapter of faith as lessons for us. Suffering and death are part of the curse of the sin in the world. That's in Genesis 3, 16 and 19. Adam and Eve um, the fall of Adam and Eve. And when they did, they brought to themselves and to all of their descendants the suffering of death, which includes us today. God told them, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Genesis 2 and, 9, 2 and 17. We know that Adam and Eve did not die physically on the day that they ate of the tree because Adam lived um, to the age of 930. Genesis 5 and 5 but um, when Adam sinned he was spiritually separated from God and that was the first death. To be separated from God because to be separated from God you have nothing. So you may as well just the question of why some people some suffer um, at death and others do not could be summed up in one statement. God is King of King and Lord of Lords. 
God is King of King and Lord of Lords. He allows or makes no mistakes. We may not understand it. We may not want to accept it, but he, he, God is, he, he's, he's perfect. So even though we, we may not see or give him the blame that, why do you do that, God? Why do you allow that to happen? Everything is done for a reason. Everything is done for a reason. When Jesus healed the man born blind, the disciples questioned him. Rabbi, who sent this, this man or his parents that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sin, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God may be displayed in his life. John 9, verses 1 to 3. God allows some to suffer so that the work of God might be displayed. In other words, God allows some to suffer to bring glory to his name and others not to suffer for the same reason. That's why some suffer and some don't suffer. For the glory of God. Both saved and unsaved. In those hard times, trust me, when you um when you are going in in those hard times, when you're really going through something rough, pain, suffering, hardship, whatever, you call on you you you'll call on the name of Jesus. And that our suffering gives God's glory. Because we're calling on the Father to help. We're calling on the Father, and that's what He wants. All glory goes to him. So we call on him in times of trouble. Therefore, we can safely say that no suffering is without a purpose in God's plan. No suffering is without a purpose in God's plan. Not ours, God's plan. The Apostle Paul suffered much in his life and ministry. A list of that suffering can be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 27. Paul was killed for his testimony, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and was decapitated after long imprisonment. However, during this time, he wrote this testimony to Timothy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord The righteous judge will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who long for his appearing. Second Timothy chapter four, verses seven to eight. Um, that's where you can find that. Another purpose for suffering is to be a witness to those watching God's grace and strength is sufficient to enable a believer to stand in that suffering. Another purpose of suffering is to be a witness to those watching that God's grace and strength is sufficient and able a believer to stand in that suffering. When you see somebody go through some stuff and you see what God has done for them, did for them, and about to do for them, you tend to say, you know what, if he went through all that, then I know I can bear it too. I know I can bear it too. And when I call on the name of Jesus like he did, I know he's going to be my help on this side of heaven or the next. That's why you hear the old saints say, I may not be healed over here, but I'm complete over there. Amen. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 reads, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest in me. Paul um, also gives us an example as to how we should view suffering as children of God. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, 
I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardship, in persecutions, in difficulties. But when I am weak, I am made strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 9-10 And Paul also said, For me to live for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Philippians 1, um, chapter 1, verse 21. I'm reading for the N, from the NIV. So sometimes when you feel, you, you're feeling weak and withered, you know, God will give you the strength. He strengthens you and um, to carry on. To fight that good fight, no matter what it is. To fight that good fight. And like I say, your healing may not be in on this side of heaven, but it's sure going to be made perfect in the next. Amen to that. Glory to God for that. Um, in closing, in closing, um, however a believer dies in suffering or in peace, it's a transition to be face to face with God. However, a believer dies in suffering or in peace. It's a transition to be face to face with our Lord and Savior. Once that transition transition has been made, all of the sorrow and pain and suffering, it ends. That's it completely healed perfectly he will wipe away every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning crying or pain for the old orders of things have passed away revelations 21 and 4 whatever you was going that person was going through like i say some people we get selfish as people especially with our loved ones they could be you know in a lot of pain have um, suffered with illnesses for years and you see them you know just withering away but we say you know what we continue to tell them to hold on hold on but they're the one that's going through all that pain and suffering and for our own selfish reasons we don't want them to go we don't want them to go I believe when a person is ready to let go when they have their conversation with God is when they say you know what Lord, I'm ready. I made my peace. I'm ready. And um, they, they, they let go. So we have to, well, mostly I tell people, you don't know what they're going through. And we can't be so selfish to want to hold on to what they're going through. So let them, whatever their decision is, they already had that talk with God. We just have to, we have to let go. We are the ones that have to let go and let them transition on and meet God face to face. Because if they're um, a believer in Christ Jesus, they're all right. They're all right. Now, if we're not sure or something like that, that's between, he, they still going to be God and their faith is in God's hands. But for those that we know that ran the race with perseverance to the end, we know that they are okay. Um, because at the end of the day, we still have to, still have to know there's still a heaven and a hell. There's God and there's the devil. There's good and there's evil. So there's a place for good and a place for evil. So that's why I say if you... If you know that they are, they ran the ran a good race, you don't have to worry about them. They are absolutely fine. Um, and the word of God is already blessed. Nothing added, nothing taken away. Amen. Um, if anyone is um, listening to this word this morning, and you want to. Um, make Jesus your personal savior or you just need a refreshing in your spirit because maybe you have fell away a little bit and once saved always saved but you just want a refreshing for your spirit you can reach um, you can
because we could say these words together. Amen. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and that I cannot save myself. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead on the third day. Thank you for bearing my sins, giving me the gift of eternal life. I believe your words are true. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my savior. Now I believe that I am saved and I am safe. In Jesus' name, amen. For those that repeat, repeated that prayer after me, may God bless you. Um, if you have prayed that prayer in sincere faith, know, know that you are saved and you are safe. Find a Bible-based church um, where you can begin to grow um, and live a holy, a, holy, a holy life, you know, a holy life filled with Christ. Um, we welcome you to the kingdom of believers. Um, come into Christ in faith. Um, trusting in him as your Lord and Savior. And you're going to definitely enjoy the ride. It gets a little bumpy. It gets a little rough. But as long as you have God on your side, and trust me, you're going to see a change in your life. As long as you know you have God on your side, and you can call on the name of Jesus, know that everything's going to be all right. Know that everything's going to be all right. And, um... Welcome. Welcome to the group of believers that we're on our way to heaven. You know, we're going to do what thus said the Lord here on earth. And when he, when he comes, like I always say, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And um, I want to thank you all for coming in with me this, um, coming in with me this morning. And having a little chit chat and you know I love God so 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 much I've been saved since um, September of 98 and I always wrote in I wrote in a book and I in my Bible in my Bible when I first started going to church and I um, I wish I would have wrote down the day that I received the Holy Ghost as a gift of talking in tongues I wish I had wrote down that date, but I know it was in the summer. I know it was in the summer, and I know it was um, it was during I think it was during the weekday. It was during the weekday, and I just felt, you know, I went to church that Sunday, and I seen people receiving the Holy Ghost, and I wanted it so bad. I was saved, and I still knew in Christ, but I just wanted the fullness of God. I just wanted to experience everything. And um, I said, I don't know what this Holy Ghost is because I grew up Baptist. I said, I don't know what this Holy Ghost is, but whatever it is, now I'm Pentecostal. But I want it. I don't know what it is, but I want it. And I went back to church on that Monday. I do remember that. I went back to church on that Monday because I didn't know that they had prayer night on Tuesday. But I went to church, went back to church on Monday. Like I said, I was new in Christ, and that's how hungry I was for it. And um, I was the only one there in the sanctuary, and I sat there. And because I, I didn't know, so I figured somebody would come by, and maybe we'd talk. And um, at that time, our choir directors, God bless him, he passed on now. He had passed by, and he said, "You waiting for something?" I said, "Um." I just need to speak to somebody about the Holy Ghost. So he said, okay, I'll be back. And he went upstairs to the office. And my bishop had came downstairs. And he said, you all right, darling? I said, yeah, I'm fine. I said, um, I was here Tuesday. I just joined the church. And they was talking about the Holy Ghost. And I don't know what that, I don't know what it is, but I just know I want it. But I, 
I don't know what it is, but I just want it. So he was like shocked. And he's like, you stay right there. You stay right there. So he went upstairs and he got um, some prayer warriors, three women, some prayer warriors. And I remember who they were. And um, we had an upper room during then upstairs. And it was, the upper room was a prayer room, just a room, um, prayer room. And they took me up in there. And I kid you not, it took all of no more than about 15 minutes because that's how bad I wanted. When you are willing to open vessel, God will give it to you like that. And when I first spoke, I spoke in Chinese. I spoke in Chinese. I'll never forget that. And um, everybody in the room was shocked. And I just spoke in Chinese. And I heard myself talking, but I knew that I was saying regular words, but it wasn't coming out that way. I'm like, what? you know, I'm steady talking, steady talking in my mind, and I'm saying what I'm saying, but it's not coming out that way. And um, when I left, I was just, I don't know how I got home. I was driving then, but I, it seemed like I just floated home. I felt so much peace. I felt an uplifting. I mean, it just totally, I can't even explain it, but it was amazing, amazing. And, um, you know, God gave me that gift. I still have that gift, and the gift comes when God allows. The gift comes when God allows, and I thank him for it. And then after that, I went to get baptized, so I got baptized. I mean, I was on fire for God. Still on fire now. I'm a little slower now because I ain't that you know young as I used to be, but I was on fire for God. But that's one of my testimonies about receiving Christ. And um, I would love for you guys to get that experience of the, the Spirit the Spirit of God, the Holy, you know, the Holy Ghost being baptized, you know, in his death and his resurrection. It's a lot to learn about our Lord and Savior. And it's more than just wearing, he's more than just wearing a cross on your neck. This is just a symbol. It's just a symbol of um, what we believe, just a symbol. And um, I just, with God, I have nothing. With God, I am nothing. With God, I am nobody. So I thank him and I praise him and I magnify him every chance I get. Even um, when I don't feel like, you know, did I pray today? Did I say something? I'll just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the food. Thank you, Jesus, for my life. Thank you, Jesus, for my children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for just being you. Thank you, Jesus, for just being the keeper. There's always something that you can thank God for. It's always something you can thank God for. And um, I try to thank him every 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 chance that I get because I'm I'm very thankful. He pulled me out of a lot of situations when I how can I say it? And a lot of people do that too. We say that we know him, but we really don't, you know. We have been, the seed has been planted in us through our parents and through our, you know, some knowledge of knowing him, you know, through hearing, you know, through um, the churches, just seeing the churches or through somebody saying something, through your grandma, through your mama, or, you know, going in church on those Easter Sundays and going back home and continue being you. But until you've been through some stuff in life, until you've been kicked hard not, until you seem like there is no way out, is and you call on the name of the Lord, and he comes and rescues you out of that situation, and you know could nobody do it but God, is when your that faith kicked in, you say, you know what? I heard about him. I seen him work some things in other people's lives. I know it's a God, but until he do something personally for you that you know that could nobody do for you, get you out of, or heal you, or whatever case may be, that's when you know that you know what? That's the God that I serve. That's the true and living God. The true and living God. Trust and believe. It takes a testimony for you to can say who God is. Your testimony alone, because only God can do it. He 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 did it. He's doing it. And he's going to continue to do it. Amen. 
And um, I just thank him. I just thank him. Because um, with him, I'm nothing. I mean, I'm sorry. Without him, I'm nothing. Um, with him, I'm everything, child. All that and a bag of chips. Yes, I am. Um, you know, because that's a God we serve. He's not a God in a box where I thank you for my shoes. I thank you for my socks. I thank you for food on the table. He's bigger than that. He is, if, if he's omnipresent to be a million places at one time, what more can he do for our little selves? He could do, uh, he could, he goes far and beyond with his children. And that's saved and unsaved. So we can't be, oh, he just do it for you because you're saved. No. He blesses the just and the unjust. You know, because there's a reason that he does what he do. Sometimes we sit back and we say, well, I'm sitting here living the life of Christ and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And that joker over there and doing X, Y, and Z, everything wrong under the sun and doing better than me. The world out there is doing better than me. And here I am serving a God and I'm like struggling. You know, you know what? You're struggling so God can make you better and not bitter. You see that stuff that's going on out there that they're doing? That's temporarily. If it's unjust and wrong and they're going from, from the back door, it ain't going to last forever. That just leads to destruction. It leads to destruction. And so um, we have to stay focused on what God gives us is for forever and it doesn't get taken away. It's forever and he doesn't take it away. When we do something wrong, it's temporarily and it comes with the consequences. It comes with consequences. So don't be jealous about what they're doing out there. Know what he wants you to do from up there. You know. So it's been amazing. You know, it's my first time. I, um, not my first time really, but I've been enjoying this particular um, scripture and this particular um, topic, you know. And once again, the topic was um, why do so many people have to experience terrible suffering before death? And like I said, it's because God is King of Kings and Lords of Lords. He makes no mistakes and no errors. We may not understand it. We may not want to see it. Sometimes we may not want to even believe it. But trust in Him. Believe in Him. Keep the faith that everything is going to be all right. And you will have weeping may endure for a night. But guess what? Joy comes in the morning. This is your girl, if you ever catch it by faith, saying, keep catching things by faith. Keep catching things by faith. Know that you already have these things, even though you don't see them yet. You see them in the spirit. You don't have them naturally. But your faith say, you already got it. You already got it. Just keep going after it. Keep going after it. And long as you can see it, you know that you have it. You know that you have it. So I love you guys once again. You guys are simply, 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 simply amazing. And um, I will be doing a live tonight and talking with you guys um, live again. And like I said, if you have any questions, just drop them in those comments. And um, like this video. Subscribe to this video and share. Share, 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 share. Share, share, share. Because somebody needs to hear this word. Somebody may be going through something. Somebody could be lost a, lost a loved one. Somebody could be going through some pain. And they just want to know why. So share, 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 share. Like, 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 like. And subscribe, 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 subscribe. And um, I will talk to you guys a little later. A little later. Um, this is Faith Talks. And um, from the streets to the church. That's what I'm about. No matter what we talk about out there, know that we're going to take it back to the Word of God. And that's what this channel is all about. is to inspire and uplift those that are brokenhearted, those that need that spiritual uplift. 
So, um, yeah. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Share. Share, share, share. And like I said, if you have any questions for me, any questions, or you want to even talk about something um, that's off, off camera, and that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you guys with that. That's my ministry. Um, so just leave comments in the leave if you just want to ask anything openly leave your comment in leave your comments below if you want to talk to some some um something more private and you just want a, a ear to hear or may need a little advice and you don't want to really express yourself on youtube which is fine any social media go to my about page and message me on instagram and we'll continue from that this is your girl, Debbie Catch by Faith, saying, if nobody say they love you, you know I do. I'm going to talk to you guys later. Stay safe. Wear those masks. You know what I always say? Social distance. If God kept you all these months, he's going to keep you for all these years. Do your part, and God will do his. Talk to you later.